I recently made a video on why the coveted 3 2 one recipe for ribs is actually not very good. So here's a simple five-step recipe that gets you tender, juicy pork ribs that don't slide off the bone, but give you what you actually want, which is these teeth marks seen here. Before you start, just know that when it comes to barbecue, temperature, color, and texture of the meat is a lot more important than the amount of time that it's been cooking. So you could have two racks of ribs, cook them exactly the same way on different days, and you'll get different results, depending on whether it's summer or winter, the amount of moisture in the air, the quality of the meat, those are all things that can affect the end product. Start by removing this membrane on the back. It doesn't do you any favors. If you can't get it off with a paper towel, just score it with a knife. That will help render out some of that. Step number two, you'll season with whatever you want. Now I'm using Honey Hog from Meat Church, which is amazing on pork. Meat Church makes a lot of different rubs, so if you wanna know what my personal favorites are, there's really only two that I think you need to buy. Add just a tiny bit of water on top of those ribs to help the spices dissolve, and then coat them heavily with your seasoning. Give it about an hour to let the seasoning adhere to the meat, but I wouldn't let it sit on there for more than two to three hours. The salt in your seasoning can actually start to cure the meat, which will change the flavor in the end. All right, number three. Once liberally seasoned on both sides, you can get the ribs on your smoker at 225. I think cooking ribs too hot is a really common mistake that can actually give them that chewy exterior. So 225 should be perfect to let the fat render out. Squish the two ends of the ribs together. Ribs tend to kind of spread out as they cook. And so doing this will minimize that and will make each bite in the end a little bit meatier and just help them hold their shape. Now on average, at this temperature, you can expect around five to seven hours for St. Louis cut ribs or spare ribs and around three to five hours for baby back. My Traeger is super duper small and things just cook really fast in there. So I was doing St. Louis ribs and I would say they finished in just under five hours or so. So for the first two to four hours, we're just gonna be letting them hang out on the smoker and we'll be spritzing them once an hour with apple juice. Or if you're going with a more savory route, you can use half water, half apple cider vinegar to spritz them instead. Now somewhere in this two to four hour range, you'll see them start to turn a nice dark mahogany red color. You'll see the bones start to shrink up around the edges. Or if you're using a temperature probe and the temperature is getting close to 160 internal, you know that we're ready for our next step, which is going to be wrapping them in aluminum foil, also known as the Texas Crutch. For the wrap, just take two sheets of heavy duty aluminum foil, stack them and lay down around two tablespoons of butter, more barbecue rub and a nice long bead of honey. It's kind of hard to over season these. Then place your ribs meat side down into the foil and try and wrap them up really tight. Try not to puncture any holes in the foil. And if you do, just lay down one more sheet and cover up the ribs to fill up that hole. I'm wrapping these not necessarily to speed up the cooking process, which is usually what wrapping is done for, um, but it's basically so that I can baste these ribs in fat and sugar until they're done. All right, step number five, these can go back on the smoker for another hour or hour and a half at the most. We don't wanna overcook these in the foil and make them mushy, which is what that three, two, one method has a tendency of doing. Now, everyone says you can't temperature probe ribs because of the bones, but I disagree. If you have a nice digital thermometer, just put it in about halfway into the meat. And if you hit a bone, just move it over half an inch and probe again until you find the meat. So we're looking somewhere between 200 and 206 for when they're finished. But the main test is really just to see if you could stick the probe into the meat with little to no resistance. If you don't have a temperature probe, you can use a toothpick for this step as well. Once they feel nice and soft, they're technically done. And here you either have two options. You can either take them out of the foil and brush the meat side with your favorite barbecue sauce and then put them back on the smoker for five to 10 minutes. Or you can just let them rest out of the foil and eat them as is, which is how I like to do it. I pour over all that butter and honey over the top, a little more barbecue rub. It makes just a perfect sauce in my opinion. It's time to slice. Go ahead and slice with the bones facing up so that you can actually see what you're doing. I've made this mistake way too many times. And boom, you have the perfect tender teeth mark ribs that aren't mushy, they're not tough on the outside, and you have now won the favor of your friends and family and the envy of your neighbors. Catch you next time, my friends. Mm -hmm.